Hi, this is Martin Brenner from Imagineer Systems, and welcome to Tip Bundle Number Two. This is where we take three of the daily mocha tips and convert them into small video examples. If you're not following our daily tips, you can find them just by looking for the Mocha Tips hashtag on our various social media outlets. So now that I've waffled on about that, let's get down to the tips. The main requirements for the Remove tool in Mocha Pro is that you have a foreground layer to cover the area you want to remove, and a background area that has been tracked so that you can use that background information to help remove the foreground. The background information has to be tracked because we need to know what that background is doing at all times throughout the entire shot. The foreground layer, however, does not need to be tracked. This can be just a hand-keyed mask, or you can use tracking information to help with your mask, but the key thing is, is that the foreground is just the area that you want Mocha to remove with the background layer. The foreground must be covered completely by the background to be removed fully by that information. To demonstrate this, I'm now going to actually remove this layer using the track background, and then I'm going to show you what happens when we delete the tracking information from the background and try to remove again. So first of all, I'll just turn off the mats, and we'll come down to Render in the Remove tool, and I'll just click the Render Current Frame. And you can see that's removed pretty cleanly. If I turn off my overlays, we've got a nice clean remove where that foreground object used to exist. So I'm going to go back to my original plate now, and let's turn back on our overlays. And I'm going to click the background and go to my dope sheet to remove the tracking information. So I've gone down to the dope sheet down here, and we've got our tracking information here. So I'm just going to delete all those tracking keys for the background layer. And we'll go back to the parameters page. Now when I select the foreground layer and I go to render, absolutely nothing happens. This is because we no longer have any information in the background to help remove that foreground. And just to drive the point home, I'm just going to remove all my layers, and I'm going to draw a new layer quickly around this guy. And you'll see if I go to my Remove tool, it's actually all greyed out, because Mocha cannot find a second layer to help with the remove. Okay, so this is called tip number five, but it probably really should be tip number one, as it's the most common support case we get over at Imagineer Systems. So you have a lovely shape like this, and it's tracking perfectly inside Mocha, and then we want to export it out over to After Effects. So I'm going to stop my playback, I'm going to export my shape data, copy to the clipboard, and switch over to After Effects. Then over in After Effects, we select our layer, and we paste our shape data in, and it's looking all great, and the sun is shining, and we're going to leave work early for once, and then we scrub our timeline, and this happens. Our shape is all over the place. The reason this happens is because of frame rate or aspect ratio mismatch. In this case, if we select our footage in the project bin over here, we can see that our frame rate is set to 24 frames per second. If we go back over to Mocha, and we go to our Clip tab, we can see here that the frame rate is set to 29.97 frames per second. So this means that regardless of how good your tracking or your roto is, your shape and tracking data are not going to match up when you paste it over to the other application. In this particular case, we know the frame rate is actually 29.97 frames. So I'm going to go into Interpret Footage in my After Effects project bin, and I'm going to set this to 29.97 frames, click OK, and I'm going to create a new composition. Now, when I paste my shape data, it all lines up correctly. And the same goes for aspect ratio. You want to make sure that the value inside interpret footage, under main, this pixel aspect ratio matches the pixel aspect ratio inside Mocha. So if I go back over to Mocha, inside the Clip tab, under Settings, we also have our pixel aspect ratio under this drop-down. And if you need to set a numerical value, you can go to Custom and enter the value into the field. But it's very, very important that these two values, the frame rate and the pixel aspect ratio, match in both applications.
After you've been working on a shot for some time, your client may suddenly decide that they want to tack an extra few frames to the start and end. While adding frames to the end of a shot is no problem, adding frames to the beginning of the shot requires a few more extra tweaks to get the work you've already done back in line. So here we have a shot where we've already tracked 300 frames, but the client wants to add another 40 frames to the beginning of the shot. So we need to relink the footage back in and then adjust the keyframes for the work we've already done. So to do this, we go to the clip tab and we choose relink to relink our clip to the new footage. So I'm going to choose choose and I'm going to find the footage that we want to use. In this case, it's this one right here and open. Make sure we've got the additional frames. In this case, originally we had 300 frames and there are now 341 frames. So I'm going to add them all in, click OK. And now when we go back to the track tab, you'll see that my logo is completely off where it used to be. This is because we've got an additional 40 frames at the beginning of our shot. You'll also notice an out point and some untracked frames because Mercury assumes that the work you've already done starts from the very beginning of the timeline. Now in our case, we know that the extra frames we need to work with are at the beginning of the timeline. So we're going to make some adjustments in the dope sheet that's available inside Mocha version three. First of all, I'm going to move my end point to the very end of the timeline so that we've got all these keys to work with. And I'm going to switch over the dope sheet to adjust the tracking data. So here in the dope sheet, we have our layer and I'm just going to scroll that down so that we can see all of the properties under that layer. And we have our tracking information here where you can see a keyframe on every single frame. And we've got spline information. And in this case, I've only got one spline key because I just drew a shape and started tracking. But if you're doing a lot of heavy roto, there'd obviously be a lot of keys here and a lot of different shapes. So once we've got this information, we can zoom out to see the whole timeline. So I'm just going to hold down the command or the control key in Windows, and I'm just going to scroll out using the mouse wheel. So we can see the whole timeline. I'm then going to just marquee select the whole lot of keys and I'm going to move those keys over to the end because we know that we want to work with the starting frames because that's what's been tacked on to the front of our timeline. So I'm just going to move those keys all the way up to the end and release. And now we have a gap at the start of our timeline rather than at the end. You'll also notice up the end here that we have no tracking information going on here even though we've moved our keys up. This is because when you draw a layer, it is actually defined by its in and out points. So you can see up here, my in point is one and my out point is 301. And this reflects the original amount of frames that we had before we relinked the clip. So what we need to do is either change this out number to 342, or just simply grab this little handle on our timeline and drag that out to the end so we get those keys back. So now let's just switch back to our parameters and we'll have a look at what we've got. At the moment we have no keyframes here, so I need to drag forwards, but you can see once we get there that the tracking information starts to move correctly. Now you'll see because we've had to move these keys around that the surface isn't quite lining up anymore. So I'm just going to just really quickly adjust that surface back to where it was. And now when I drag through, you can see that locking down quite nicely for the rest of the frames. We then just need to come back to our original point and start tracking backwards. And this will now track the remaining frames that were missing before we added them on in the previous project. So that wraps up tip bundle number two. If you're not following Mocha Daily Tips, you can find them on our Twitter at Imagineer System, or you can go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Imagineer Systems, or you can just search for the Mocha Tips hashtag on your favourite brand of internet search engine. This has been Martin Brennand for Imagineer Systems.